First question in the room. I can always count on you having the dope Ken Griffey Jr. merch, man. You're a big fan, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Born in Seattle, so. Born and raised in Seattle, so. Yeah. Big, uh, big fan. I saw you were training lots alongside some Bellator veterans, Henry Corrales, Dan Moret, among others. What prompted you to go get some work in down at Fight Ready in Arizona? Uh, you know, I mean, working with my dad and Julia since I was a kid, obviously, and, and doing most of our camps in Port Moody, B.C., uh, we have a fantastic team at Gibson MMA, but we want to expand and uh, we got a lot more uh, elite wrestling with, with the guys at fight ready and uh, got to really inv- advance our skills. So. so you don't strike me as someone that cares about gambling, but I got to ask you this question. You've been a heavy betting favorite in most, if not all of your past Bellator fights, you're a sizable underdog in this one. Are you happy with the pace that Bellator is pushing you at? And are you happy that you're receiving a little bit of a boost, higher level of competition in this one? Uh, well, first thing I, I would say is uh, I don't think uh, betting odds really mean anything at the end of the day. Uh, it's a fight. So whatever it says on paper doesn't, doesn't mean, uh, necessarily show up in the cage. So my thing is I'm about business and I'm about doing my job and I'm about the physical. So I'm not about the paper. I'm not about the all the other stuff I'm about to go in there and do my job and take them out. So it doesn't matter. I uh, I'm ready to go. Are you hoping that next fight week? I know you're fully focused on this one, but maybe next fight week, Bellator books, a dog friendly hotel. That would be awesome. You know, cause uh, Suki was really sad that she couldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. Good to see you, Lance. Good to see you too, man. My man. Um, So in your last fight, we got to see you fight off of your back. Very nice submission. Do you anticipate that you may have to fight off of your back again in this fight? And how have you prepared accordingly? You know what? So with this fight, uh, I've noticed Tokov, he's uh, taking people down. That's one of his favorite things to do. Uh, And I think I can handle anything in this fight. Like I beat him in in any position and any facet of the game of mixed martial arts, I destroy him. I have all the skills. I have all the abilities. So at the end of the day, if I'm on my back, I'll submit them or I'll light them up from there and then I'll reverse them. Once I'm on top, I'll light them up as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter if he, if he takes me down, I'll get back up and he'll be dead exhausted. And then I'll, t- I'll take him out on my feet. So. I know you said the betting odds don't matter to you, but they'd matter if you go bet, man. Do you oh, want to yeah, win absolutely. some money? Yeah. Is, is putting something <laughs> down? Absolutely. I bet. I, you know, my, all my friends and stuff, they, they do the betting. So uh, they'll, it, I mean, win big money if you bet on Lance Fearless. So yeah, thanks. So Lance, as you, one second, sorry. As you talked about just a couple moments ago, you did implement some new training partners and some new, a new gym into your camp uh, for this fight. Talk to me about, you know, how you, how those training partners helped you prepare and uh, the, the new kind of skills or new attributes to your, to your fights or to yourself that you're able to implement now. Uh, you know, I mean, there's so many different names. I can't really name everybody, but obviously Henry Cejudo there uh, is tech like tactical abilities and his uh, vision in the sport is pretty like you can't compare. So getting advice and tips from him literally in the middle of my cage rounds, when I've got fresh guys on me every, every round uh, that's helped a lot, helped out a lot. Having my dad and Julie on my side in my corner, obviously has helped a lot. Uh, My training partners, uh, Dan Moret. I mean, the guy's walking around, he's a 55er in Bellator. He, walks around at like two Oh five. So like having him wrestle me is, I, I don't think Tokov can even compare to, to his strength and size. So, uh, and obviously my other training partners, Ray waters wrestled at ASU, uh, Austin Clayton re- wrestled at ASU. Uh, all these guys are monsters. And, uh, I mean, my skills are, my skills were already great. And I think you'll just see another, another advancement into my, into my, uh, all my abilities. All right. And last question during this camp, were you able to take, you know, on, on one of your days where you're done training early, uh, were you able to catch any big fish this past camp? How's the fishing been for you? You know, we were, we were in Arizona, so we didn't get a chance to, I seen a couple lakes that obviously you you're able to fish at, but, uh, you know, I picked up a bow. So the, I I've never, uh, done archery, so it was good. I, I picked up a compound bow and I've been practicing getting set up with that. So it's a whole new avenue of, learning and and it's a 
it's going to be a nonstop learning process. But that's what I love about life is uh, being able to develop and enhance your skills in so many different areas. And I think that translate directly to the sport. And I think that's why I'm going to be one of the greatest. Thank you. We'll take a couple more here. Cade. Hey, Lance. How's it going? Great. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Uh, a lot of fighters go to fight ready, uh, big time fighters to prepare for big fights. I've seen a lot of fighters even leave their camps and fight ready is one of the top gyms that they end up at just because of the IQ of Henry Cejudo. Uh, are, is that something that you want to continue to do uh, going forward is training at that gym? Did you take away a lot of things that, that Henry was able to give you that make you say, you know what, maybe, maybe for future camps, I want to fight. I want to train here. Uh, I mean, absolutely. Uh, my home base will always be Gibson MMA. So my team at Port Moody, BC, uh, that's my home base. Uh, I think we'll finish our off our camps and sharpen up our skills at fight ready. And uh, yeah, exactly. Henry's awesome. Uh, both Corrales and uh, Henry Cejudo, uh, but Cejudo's given a lot of advice. So is Corrales. Corrales is in my corner. Almost. I think he is louder than anybody else in my sparring rounds. That guy is louder than anybody else, and he's the most motivating because I could be down with th the third fresh, the third fresh guy in one of my sparring rounds, and uh, he's like, "Let's go, get up! He can't hold you down, get up!" And I, I'm. I'm like, I, I hear it immediately and I'm up on my feet and yeah, he's, he's awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Santiago. Hi Lance. Thank you for the time. It's a big night for Canada with four Canadian fighters scheduled on this card. Can you feel it as well that this is a big night for your country and would it be special for you to fight one day in Canada for Bellator? That'd be great to fight in Canada for Bellator. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's been a dream. Uh, for a while since I've been here. Uh, it's been a dream since uh, Julia Budd was here too as well. So, I mean, if they can make that happen, that'd be dope. There's this lightweight tournament going on right now. There's a big spotlight on your division and you are one of the, or maybe even the biggest prospect coming up in this division. Are you content with the way that the company is building you up towards a place in the rankings? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking one step at a time. Uh, I'm ready to go. And uh, I, I just do my job at the end of the day. I, that's what I'm here to do. Uh, I try not to talk a lot. I try to just do my job. So whatever is placed in front of me, I, t I take and I seize the opportunity when it comes. Zach. And you're going into your eighth fight right now and sixth with the promotion. So where do you feel like you are at your career right now? You know, I'm just getting started. Uh, I, tend to say it a lot. I'm, I'm just like the fire's just really, really starting to starting to sizzle and starting to burn. So I think, uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm here and I'm going to take over. So, uh, it's just a matter of time. Marty. Hey Lance, um, coming into this fight, you look very unfazed, you know, obviously you've done the preparation for the fight against Tokov um, Tokov doesn't phase you. Your nickname is fearless. Fishing doesn't phase you. But what does phase you in life? Uh, getting stung by bees. Uh, because <laughs> I we're we're beekeepers, and uh, I always tend to get stung in my face, so that does phase me. I I try not to let it phase me, but it does phase me because I swell up and look like a freaking monster. But uh, <laughs> uh, and then you know during hunting season sometimes you don't tag out and you see lots of deer and you don't get an opportunity, so uh, that phases me for sure. <laughs> But I try not to let it. I try not to take it too personally because obviously it's it's a, a skill hunting. It's not you don't just go out there and just tag out and head home. But uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that does phase me a bit. And uh, getting stung by bees obviously phases me. And a prediction, fight prediction. Yeah, I've been saying it uh, the last little bit. Uh, submission would be fantastic. I think I see submission in any position. I, I, I honestly see a fi finish really at the end of the day. Unanimous decision is kind of very, very last case scenario. There is no option. The split decision is not even an option. Majority decision is not an option. Unanimous decision is last case scenario, like 0.00001%. And then TKO, KO, or submission, period. Thanks, Lance. Appreciate the time.